Filters within Notion. What are they? How do they work? How can you use them? Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover all of those questions and more so that you can feel confident about using filters within your Notion workflow. What's up guys, my name is Daniel Langwish and I'm a current student focused on helping you in your process of digital organization and productivity. And on this channel, I create all sorts of organization and productivity videos, including Notion videos, just like this one. So if this is something you're interested in, make sure you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel to join me on this journey of improving your digital organization process. And this isn't the first Notion video I've created. I've actually got a whole playlist that I've been working on and you can click on the link above or I'll have it down in the description below if you wanna check that out. With that being said, let's jump in to how to use filters. So I think the first question is, what is a filter? You know, we're gonna start at the basics here. So a filter within Notion is within any table that you have, you can add a filter to basically restrict what the table is showing you and in result, give you the exact information that you wanna see. So here at this page, I've got just the an example filters page um, with something that someone might have for a semester of classes. So up here, I've got a semesters table, a classes table, and a homework table. And so on any table, you can go and click on these three little dots and go down to filter. And then you can just click add filter. And when adding a filter, you can filter by basically any property that you have within your table. So the default is name and I could, you know, type, I want to filter by anything that starts with F. And you'll see now within this table, only finance is showing up. And there are tons of options here. You can filter by any of the properties that you have. Right now, we only have three. Um, then you can also do it is, is not, contains, does not contain, all this sort of stuff. And you can play around with that. Um, basically, you can filter by almost anything. Um, and yeah, so that's basically how you add a filter. So let's look at an example of how you might use this. Down here at the homework page, let's say you wanna have a homework view of the things that you need to get done, but then you also want a view of all the things that you already completed. Well, right now, if I complete a homework assignment here and I click it, it just goes checked, but it stays there. But with filters, we can make it so that those things disappear and go into a different view. So we could click here and we could click filter and we want this table to show us where the done checkbox is not checked. And so now when we, when we'll click on this, it is going to get rid of it because now it's checked and it's gonna filter it out of there. Now we could go over to a different view here and go to a completed view and in the completed view, we only wanna see the things that are checked. So we could go back to filter and click on done and click check. And so that is just a quick way of how you could use filters, you know? So now when I alternate back and forth between to do and completed, it is the things that I've done and the things that I need to do. Now, what about more complex filtering? Well, Notion gives you a lot of custom customization. You can go in here and let's, uh, so let's here, let's remove, we'll leave that for now. But what if you want a table that uh, is really customized to like a specific class and things that are only within the next week? So let's create a share. You'll see it's gonna pull up the same things. I'm gonna, you know, customize this a little bit, make it look all nice. Um, sure, we'll just we'll just stick with that for now. But let's say we want to add a little more, more of a custom filter. Well, within filters, you can just add a normal filter and that's what we already did, but you can also add a filter group. So I'm gonna do that now. And basically what this is doing is it's nesting filters so that you can uh, do some more complex things. So let me show you an example of how that could work. So let's say we want to have a table that is showing us um, specific classes and the assignments due in those classes within the next week. So, but we don't wanna show every class. Um, so what we could do is we could do where the, we only want classes from this semester. So we could go where the semester contains uh, this. And we can go and the due date 
is within the next week. So you can also go in and add a filter by group, which uh, is just if you wanna do nested filters and just gives you a lot more customization with uh, the type of filters that you want. Now another really powerful way that you can use filters is to create a custom table that has filters and thus when you create a new item within that table, it'll auto populate a lot of the information for you. So an example of this, let's go into my finance class here. And we're gonna do new class so that it pulls up with the template that I had. I just added a quick little thing. So let's go over to to do. Now you'll see in the finance page, we have a filter here where done is not completed and where class contains finance and semester contains spring 2021. So if I didn't have those filters, I could create a new to-do and I could enter, you know, class, finance, semester, 2021, all that manually. However, since I have this database filtered by that, watch what happens when I create a new item. I click new and those things automatically got added. And this is a super powerful thing that I want you to take away is that creating these custom views of uh, linked databases adding these filters on them can save you a ton of time because it can enter a lot of information for you automatically. Now you'll notice that nothing got entered into type, but what if we, uh, what if the default that we wanted was for type to be, um, maybe the thing we do most is reading. Uh, I do that a lot in school right now. Well, if you, whatever option that you select here at the top, you're gonna wanna put it at the top, whichever one you do the most. Now, another thing we can filter by, let's delete this, is we could also add where and the type, and then you select is not empty. So what that'll do is now when you add it, and let me just show you here, click new, you'll see it automatically clicked on reading. And that's because whenever you do not empty with these type of select fields, it's gonna choose the top one. So if you set the top uh, select option to the one that you do most often, then that'll save you even more time. So another thing that I really love to do with filters is to use them when creating an inbox where I can quickly input information. So let me show you how this works in uh, my finance class page here. So what we could do is let's say we want an inbox for inputting homework. I could create a linked database or we're going to create a linked database to my homework database. So you'll see this is actually the same linked database as up here, but we're going to add different filters. So what we're going to do here is we are going to filter where the class contains, and we're going to add finance. Then we're gonna say, and the semester contains spring 2021. And we're gonna say the type is not empty. And we're gonna say where the due date is, uh, let's see, is, there we go, is today. And I think, I think that's all of them that I'm gonna want. So what this is gonna do is we are going to, when we add something new into the inbox, you'll see it is gonna auto fill all of those things for us. And so we can, uh, you know, type a read book, you know, for this thing. Um, but then it is down here and it gets auto added in all of our homework with all of those things. Now, something you could do um, to, something that I like to do with inboxes to make uh, make it so that they're not just building up but they actually go away is I would, what I'd probably do is go back into the filter and for type, I would say, or fill type, uh, Let's see, I would actually probably delete this and then go in and say where type is empty. And that way, so when I add it, I could choose the type. So I could say read book and then choose, and then when, and then when I choose the type, 
you'll see it actually leaves the inbox and goes up into my homework. And that's a good way to kind of process your inbox. So yeah, if there's nothing else you take away from this video, use filters to automatically input information by creating linked databases and then adding custom filters to those databases. And if you want any help in how to do this, um, you can definitely just drop a comment down below and I would love to help you out with setting up those filters in your own workflow. Now, the last thing I wanna cover that is awesome with filters is that you can actually add a filter within a template and filter it by that new template itself. And that may sound confusing, uh, it was to me at first, but let me show you how this can be super helpful. Is if you're going through school, you're gonna be uh, taking lots of classes. You know, each semester you're gonna be uh, taking new classes. And so I've got here a new class template. And let me just edit and show you, show you what I got here. And so every time I create a new class, it is going to add a linked database to homework. That's great, you know, I'm gonna be adding uh, assignments and I want them to be for that new class. However, whenever I create this new class, I would normally have to go in and click filter and add uh, the current class that this is gonna be. You know, let's say this is gonna be uh, economics, you know, then I would have to go in and click filter and filter by the class economics so that it only shows me the homework that's for economics. Otherwise, it'll just show me everything. However, let me show you what uh, Notion added an update to do is you can go into filter and you'll notice I've got filter where done is incomplete, uh, semester spring 2021, but you'll notice this middle one where class contains new class and that is this template name. So basically what that means is whenever you create a new class, it'll already be set up to filter based off the new class. So every time you create a new class, it'll already be set up to do the filter that you need to only show the assignments for that class. And that is huge, huge time saver when constantly creating new classes and just any setup you might have to automatically have those filters ready, uh, ready to go for you. So, you'll, so let me just show you as an example, we go, let's, uh, let's go back here and let's create a new class. We're gonna call it economics, oops. Click new class, here we go. I will say the semester is spring 2021. And now you'll notice that the homework, let me add, let me add a, let's go to to-do. You'll notice whenever I added a new to-do, it is already filtered by economics. So there's just an example of how you can uh, self-referencing filters. You can filter by the page itself. There is so much that you can do with filters. This was just a quick intro. Um, if you have any questions, again, uh, drop them down in the comments below. I, I definitely will get to all of them and hopefully I can help you out. And if you have any cool ways that you've been using filters within your workflow, uh, let me know. I would love to see how you and the community have, are using filters to power up your Notion workflows. And again, this was just kind of a basic overview of filters. If you would like to look into more uh, complex uh, ways of using filters, uh, I could definitely make a video about that in the future. But that's it for today. Until next time.